Good morning, and uh, welcome back to another edition of Gary's Movie Aporium. Today is Thursday, May 6th. Um, today is going to be about around 26 titles this morning, uh, mostly DVD, but there are a couple, two or three Blu-ray. Well, let's get started on what I picked up at this la uh, the latest Dollar Tree April wave. Um, first up, I got a movie called What If. Uh, Starring Daniel, uh, Daniel Radcliffe, who played Harry Potter, obviously. Uh, and Zoe Kazan, Megan Park, Adam Driver, Mackenzie Davis, and Ra Rafi Spall. Uh, being friends has its benefits. Adam B. Very uh, from BuzzFeed says it's ref refreshingly funny and romantic. This one's uh, from Sony Pictures, along with CBS Films. And it does get a... a a rate, uh, movie rating of PG-13. Does have a couple of special features on this as well. Um, they're saying Daniel Radcliffe and Zoe Kazan uh, spin uh, sweet magic in this film, says Peter Traver Travers of uh, Rolling Stone. Uh, Pete Hammond of Movie Line says it's the best comedy about relationships, relationships since 500 Days of Summer. And that's What If. Uh, 235 by 1 with a widescreen presentation and clocks in at about 98 98 minutes on this one so pretty short I mean it's not that short but it's short it's not like a two-hour uh, lovey dub that goes on for a little too long it's probably perfect uh, in length here at 98 minutes I'm sure it gets its point across and then next up, I got a U Bull presents Raging Bull. Six ruthless critics versus one furious filmmaker. They pick, they pick the fight. He just made them regret it. Not a U Bull film, it says. Uh, this is this is a, a Martini Entertainment release. I think this is the first time I've ever got a Martini Entertainment. If, if it is, if it isn't, then it's like my second or third at the very at the very uh, most. Uh, from 2010, uh, clocks in at 90 minutes and has a 178 by 1 aspect ratio. One of the most controversial figures in indie cult cinema, German-born director Hugh Boll is, no is known not only for his outrageous low-budget action films, but also for his engaging and lively, often heated exchanges with his critics. In 2006, Boll offered his detractors a chance to settle their differences in the ring and what began as a publicity stunt quickly evolved into, into a symbolic highly publicized battle between an artist and his critics I guess that's what's going on in this one um, I don't really understand I mean I understand some of his movies are kind of bad but I'm all, I've always liked everything pretty much everything he's done I like House of the Dead I know I'm going to get bashed for that one but I had fun with that one. I mean, it had, it had Clint Howard in it. Uh, had Ellie uh, Cornell from Halloween 4 and 5. Uh, I mean, it. I liked it. And I believe one of the girls that played in it, too, played in a cop show. <clears throat> I'm not sure what, what show it is right now. Because it's just kind of like, it was from, what, five, six years ago. I want to say it was uh, Rookie Blue. Uh, she was the dispatcher on the show. She she didn't start out a dispatcher, but she was on the show, and she was in House of the Dead before she was on Ricky Blue on ABC. But uh, I I honestly don't get the hate for you, Bull, because I, I've seen a lot worse directors, and I like I said I liked I love that scene in House of the Dead where uh, it kind of does the slow motion stuff and. Kind of shows like your game playing, and then like when they die, it lights them up like they're di gonna die and disappear. But uh, I don't like I said I don't get the hate on him. I I've even reached out to him, telling him I like I like a lot of his stuff. And, uh, give me a thumbs up. So that's uh, you bull presents raging bull. And then next up, I got 15 movies, our most requested westerns. Uh, Echo Bridge Acquisitional Corporation, LLC. Uh, almost 1,300 minutes on this. Has anything from nothing to good 
too good for a cowboy to sitting bull right down to the decoy and I'm going diagonally here so it has 15 movies three DVDs and over 20 hours of uh, content on this disc pretty nice little set there from Echo Bridge I'd imagine they're probably stacked on top of each other as well so be prepared for that and they do a pretty good job of stacking. I mean, I know everybody else does the stacking thing too, but uh, I've never really had a problem with them running free from them because I, I don't know. I think they're they make sure that their discs are tight to the spools, like unlike some companies where you you put them on a spool, and all you got to do is basically move them and they pop off. So sometimes it isn't just it, it isn't on the tree, it isn't on a worker. Sometimes it's on the company that makes these discs because they, sometimes they're a tight, snug fit to the spool, and sometimes they're already loose. You know, like they they don't fit, like they don't really check them before they send them out. Oh, and then uh, I got a Leapfrog Scout and Friends, a magnificent museum of opposite words, an all new DVD. It says it's from Learning Path. Early reading skills, opposite words, synonyms, world. And wor or word build, word building. It's a 16 by 9 widescreen presented, 178 by 1. It's for ages 2 to 5. It does have a uh, quite a few special features: a sing-along, a uh, commentary for parents, uh, the scout song being a puppy, a surprise for scout video, and they say this is for the young and, and the old, <laughs> and, the, and the young at heart, I guess you could say. But uh, that's a uh, magnificent uh, museum of opposite words, and it does how it does the the th the deep like the logos and stuff all kind of come off like you can feel them almost like a like a way a person that has has a uh, blindness could feel braille. This is kind of what this feels like. It kind of like you can feel it and stuff. So uh, that's a leapfrog uh, learning learning uh, movie and it did come with a slip oh and it's a green it's a green case <laughs> very much to go with my backlight here but uh next up I got a, uh, a Rob Stewart film I'm sorry about all the distractions my cats are doing something in the background uh, from the director of Sharkwater winner of 36 awards Revolution, open your eyes. Well, this is a Canadian produced disc. Um, bonus features, making of revolution, how to start a revolution, fight for something, theatrical trailer, uh, and so on. Let's see. 2.0 Adobe Digital, um, anamorphic paint. Panoramic and anamorphic widescreen, uh, 178 by 1, both 86 minutes. Uh, I don't know if there's two discs on here. That's what it's looking like, but can't be two, I wouldn't think. But, but uh, dual layer disc on this. And that's Revolution. I want to see if this had a, a Blu ray in this wave, too. I'm not sure, though. I think I've seen that somewhere, but uh, that's the DVD version of it. And then I got a double feature of uh, Op Operation Valkyrie and Days of Glory from Cynodyme. Also from the Weinstein Company. <laughs> oh, God. I hate mentioning that name, but I like to tell you it's about the details of these discs. Uh... Operation Valkyrie la uh, clocks in at 92 minutes, while Days of Glory is about two hours. I uh, believe these are both also IFC films as well. Uh, Sebastian Coach uh, from The Lives of Others is in this. Uh, and, let's see. I really see. Uh, Los Angeles Times is... I, Kenneth Turn called uh, Days of Glory a North African 
save it, saving Bryant Ryan, a top involving film that delivers all the things we look for in war movies. So they're calling uh, Days of Glory a uh, North African uh, saving, saving Private Ryan. I doubt it's on that level, but maybe it is pretty good too. But it does, because it does get, uh, where was it? Yeah, it does get a number of accolades here and there. Yeah, so let's look at the back. And then I got my hands on this. It's a widescreen pre presentation of the movie Step Up, Two Dancers, Two Worlds, One Dream. The last time I knew this had like five, five, five or six movies that are in the series. Uh, it's PG-13, bonus material not rated. 103 minutes on this one. Digitally mastered. Uh, from Summit Entertainment and Touchstone Home Entertainment. Has a slew of bonus features on this one, as you can see right there. See all the featured content they have. You can right there in the dark, like brown. That's all the stuff you get, guys. Uh, full of energy, heart, and wonderful dancing. Bust bust a move to the sizzling sounds of these hot artists. Young Jacques, Sean Paul. Chris Brown, Kells, Mario, and I think this is Clara. It's either says Clara or Sierra. I'm not sure. I, couldn't, I can't really make it out because the, the eye, it doesn't really look like an eye, but it could be that too. But that's a movie step up. Uh, starring, um, I can't remember his name. Uh, Oh, Channing Tatum. Okay. Yeah, I should have knew that. He went on to play in uh, Magic Mike, um, Jupiter Ascending. Um, now, he played a whole slew of movies after, you know, a, amount of time. Uh, he played in the t uh, 21 and 22 Jump Street movies. Um, went on to play in a lot of other stuff. This movie is directed by Ann Fletcher as well. And that's Step Up. And then I got a Scooby-Doo Shaggy Showdown original movie. Uh, what, uh, old uh, throwback Scooby-Doo here with taking place in the West. Uh, Warner Brothers title, 80 minutes. Uh, does have some bonus uh, episodes on this as well. As accompanied with some trailers with uh, Curse of the Speed Demon. Be Cool Scooby-Doo Season 1 Part 1. So I mentioned something about Legos too in that uh, those trailers and Scooby Doo itself. I don't know if it's talking about Scooby Doo, one of the movies, or you know, one of the ones they did after this that would be coming out shortly after they came out with this. But uh, it's from Hanna Barbera as well, and directed by Matt Peters, and that's Scooby uh, Shaggy Showdown. Original movie. I don't know if I said how long it is. It is 80 minutes. So, about, about average for a Scooby-Doo film. A little longer in some in some regard. Because some, some I've seen have been like 67, 70, 70, 72, somewhere around there. But, and then I think I might have had this on Blu-ray, but I'm not sure. Music Cares tribute to Paul Cartney. Or Paul McCartney, I'm sorry. Uh, Music Cares presented this. This is a Shout Factory. Um, it has a whole slew of artists that perform uh, a number of the Beatles and uh, Paul McCartney songs in his trip, and you know, in his uh, honor, I guess, because he was uh, honored as the 2012 Person of the Year at a gala event in Los Angeles. Uh, cast of superstars guests perform some of the quintessential songs from from his renowned and celebrated career. Uh, Proceeds from the sale of this uh, product will provide essential support for Music Cares. So I, get, I don't know if this is still ongoing. Uh, anyone that buys this gives money to Music Cares for uh, mu mus uh, that music people have a place to turn in times of financial, medical, and personal need. So I don't know if every upon every purchase of this, People continue to get. They continue to bring in money. I have no idea. Probably doubtful. 
because this was like nine years, uh, going on ten years ago, but I don't know, maybe, hopefully, I gave them a dollar towards it, and anyone else that bought it, but like I said, that's a Shout Factory release, so, once again, a steal for a dollar, and then I got a movie starring uh, Victoria Emmons, Megan McCabe Habra, and Austin Kearney. Uh, saving Winston, a, tr a troubled teen, a rescued horse, and God. And it gets three uh, Dove Seal of Approvals here uh, from Pure Flix Entertainment. And three special features, commentary, trailers, and behind the scenes. Uh, it's from 2011. Redemption Through Faith, says the Dove Foundation. Uh... I think I might have read this one before to you guys. I'm not sure. Uh, troubled teen is forced to uh, leave a self-destructive lifestyle. She discovers an abandoned horse along her journey to redemption. Will temptation from the dark shadows of her past lead her astray, or will he, or her newfound love of God and a rescue horse help her find salvation? Looks pretty interesting. She kind of looks a little bit like... Um, What's that girl's name? I can't think of it. Um, oh, geez. I'm not good with younger actresses and actors these days, but I uh, can't think of her name. She dated Justin Bieber at one point. I can't I can't remember. Um, Selena Gomez. That's who she looks like. She looks like Selena Gomez a little bit here, I think. Uh, hair, the hairstyle, kind of her facial features. Uh, she looks like uh, Selena Gomez a little bit here. Uh, obviously isn't with the, you know, there's no mention of her on here. And I think she's the main actress in this. And yeah, she's probably the Megan McCabe Habrat, uh, or Habrat, however you want to pronounce it, actress in this. <clears throat> and then I got uh, a BBC experience, one of the darkest hours of the 20th century. Churchill's First World War. Uh, I don't know much about this one. Uh, at the outbreak of war, Britain's first lord of the Admi Admiralty. 39-year-old Winston Churchill dreams of winning fame and glory. <laughs> kind of feel like the guy from, uh, uh, what's that show? It's on um, tr uh, Travel Channel. Uh can't remember it was like it goes back and like talks about historical things <laughs> like talks about paintings and where how they derived that's how i feel like when i read stuff like on the back on like winston churchill it sounds like something they would talk about on that show uh i think it's mysteries at the museum that's what <laughs> that's what i kind of feel like when i read stuff like this uh it's 93 minutes 16 by 9 region 1 ntsc uh, 2014, um, but when the disastrous battle, uh, geez, that's a weird, strange word for me to say, Gallipoli leads to his disgrace and event, eventual resignation. He dreams of redemption and instead joins the future, future statesman in this dramatic documentary as Churchill tries to rehabilitate his reputation by taking up active service in the British Army at the risk of getting killed. You will be fascinated by this revealing story told through Churchill's own words and intimate letters to Clementine, his young wife and trusted confidant. See how political intrigue, ambition, and remarkable military adventures combined with the love of a wise woman to forge Britain's future great champion of World War II. That's a BBC release. Really, uh, sounds kind of interesting, but like I say, it sounds a lot like something Mysteries at the Museum would have come out with. But uh, then I got a t DVD CD set of uh, the Rolling Stones, Some Girls, and I, I don't this cover has always fascinated me. i seen it in Hamilton Book. I almost bought it several times, but I didn't really know nothing about it. Uh, it has 17, I guess, songs? I have no idea. Uh, it's the Rolling Stones 78 tour of the U.S. in support of the year's 
Some Girls album, album is considered by fans to be one of their very best. Uh, bonus features with Mick Jagger, an interview. Saturday Night Live, tomorrow with Dan Aykroyd and Mick Jagger. Uh, Beast of Burden, Respectable and Shattered. And there is, too, an ABC News 2020 interview with the Rolling Stones in this as well. Uh, comes from 2011 and is a hair over two hours, and, uh, about two hours and eight minutes on this uh, total uh, disc. But I really love the cover to this. It's really, it's standout-ish to me. And then it's got the, you know, the classic uh, Rolling Stone uh, tongue sticking out with kind of the, the bigger lips and I guess they're trying. I guess I always think that's probably something to do with uh, Mick Jagger, because you know, the, you know, kind of the obvious reasons they, you know, he's got kind of a bigger uh, mouth. Yeah, I guess that's what they're. That's what the purpose of that is. I really never known the whole story behind the the logo, but that's what I would say. But that's a a Rolling Stone set. Looks pretty. Uh, if you're a huge Rolling Stone fan. That's a huge get. Uh, and then next up, I got Pure Flix Presents Faith, Faith of Our Fathers from the studio that brought you God's Not Dead, His Story of Fatherhood and a Journey of Brotherhood. PG 13, and it's from 2017. John and Paul, or John, Paul, and Wayne are two young men in search of their father. Father has been dead for 25 years. Eddie and Stephen are two of the sons whom they're whom they who he's never met. And in 1969, Eddie and Stephen are with their squad deep in the jungle of Vietnam on a five-day mission to retrieve fallen comrades. They write letters to their wives, often mentioning their love for their sons, one who is an infant and one yet to be born. And in 1994, John, Paul, and Wayne go on a five-day road trip. <laughs> Perfect timing for that. I'm sorry, I gotta turn this phone off because otherwise, if this person calls me back, boy. I don't know. My phone is all like seven ways to screwed up. <laughs> it's so full of stuff that I, I hardly have even room to take pictures on it. Um, Terrible timing on that. Like I say, I'm sorry. Uh, special features. Uh, it's like five special features on this one. All kinds of no noise going on in this video this morning. Oh, God. And any anything and everything is going wrong in this video this morning. Faith of Our Fathers. Looks like a really interesting one. I guess it takes place, like it said, during the Vietnam era. Yeah. And I guess they go in 1994 to visit the Vietnam Wall of Washington, D.C. I don't know if they're going to see if their father's actually on it. I have no idea, but that's uh, Faith of Our Fathers. That looks really good. My, my dad would probably look something like that because he was in the Vietnam War. And then I got the Kumars, Kumars at number 42. They hit the hit comedy from BBC America and Canada. And I'm not really going to discuss a lot on this one because I think I discussed this one in another video. 20 minutes of unseen footage. Warner Brothers title here. In conjunction with BBC video. Uh, does have guest appearances by Richard Grant, Michael Parkinson, uh, Mini Driver, Faye Ripley. Gary Linker, Claire Sweeney, Mel B, Lawrence Lewin Bowen, Ray Winstone, Richard and Judy and Lorraine Kelly and Stephen Fry and Leslie Garrett. So all of these, you know, all these people popped up in this show. I guess it's a, I don't know what you want to call it, like a, about an immigrant family who have bulldozed their backyard so they can build a studio on the back of their house. And they basically indulge their spoiled son, Sanjeev, who uh, fancies himself as a celebrity talk show host. So I guess this is like if Letterman own, owned his own studio off the side of his house. That's what they do here, I guess. Sounds kind of interesting. Funny as well. But that's the Kumars at number 42. I don't know if they're trying to say... That's what places show comes in, like as it goes public access, or you know, like kind of, on, not public access, but like 
like on a network or something and it comes in at number 42 i don't know what they're going for there or that's the name of the studio which he made off the side of the house i have no idea uh, and then i got clive owen and juliet binoche uh, one of the best films of the year words and pictures universal release this too is a canadian produced uh, disc here because i can tell by the logos and it has the uh, canadian maple leaf on the back uh 235 by one just uh just a hair, hair short of two hours decent amount of special features basically it's about an unlikely romance i guess from what i'm reading on the back and that's uh words and pictures and then i picked up this animated set Popeye the Sailor, it's a 75th anniversary, 24 classic cartoons. It's an Echo Bridge, and this was a Walmart exclusive because it even has the Walmart uh, like sticker and uh, the writing saying Walmart on it as well. Uh, this has 187 minutes, which is like three hours, hair over three hours on this one. This one's been digitally remastered as well, so... This should look really good. Uh, it has a slew of uh, sh uh, movies or uh, shows or episodes on this. Uh, apparently, Popeye was created in 1929. I didn't know that. So it's, on January 17, 1929, a new hero was born. A sailor, to be exact. He wasn't too bright, too handsome, or too strong. His name, Popeye. The lovable cowboy of the high seas made his debut on L.C. Seagar's 10-year-old ten, ten comic strip, The Thimble Theater, which revolved around Olive Oil's family, Popeye quickly eclipsed the cartoon's other characters and became the, became the star of the strip. The tattooed sailor with a corncob pipe became the world's most, most beloved underdog with, it, with who, with a swig from a can of spinach, could take, take on anyone or anything. Popeye had a long... Long fuse and a sharp sense of fairness, and, and spinach was only a last resort when he reached his breaking point, often indicated by the proclamation that that all I can stands and I can't stands no more. So, pretty interesting little backstory just in that first paragraph there. So, this looks really cool. <laughs> Sorry, it, do, it just does, it just sounds really good. And then I got a movie starting down at Donna Michi, Catherine McLeod, uh, that's my man, directed by Frank Borzage or Borzog from Paramount Pictures in conjunction with Olive Films. Uh, virtually unseen by the public for more than 60 years, that's my man, is a quiet uh, little tone poem of love from two time Oscar winning director Frank Bor Borzage. Uh, Don Amici stars as a bookkeeper who yearns to own a, own a racehorse whose dreams materialize when he comes to into possession of a promising stallion named uh, Gallant Man. Uh, but his passion for racing threatens to spoil his relationship with his wife who shares Joe's idealism but not his willingness to wager their future on such a high stakes dream. So basically, they're at odds because he's going to be spending way too much money and putting stress on their marriage because lack of money. And sounds really cool. Uh, it's from 1947, black and white, 99 minutes, uh, 137, 137 by one. That's kind of weird, <laughs> but it is the first time, as it says, in 60 years that this has been seen. I guess. So I was lucky to get that. And like I said, it was an olive film. So, and it's kind of weird. It's I just talked about Popeye, and then an olive film pops up, so it's just kind of weird. <laughs> and then this is the one I was talking about, 40 action-packed episodes on four DVDs, the Lone Ranger Legends Collection. Uh, I had a blue-colored case on a different one, so now I got the red one, too. Um, and this one, I think, incorporates the Cisco, Cisco kit in it a little more, as opposed to the other one was mostly, I guess, about Lone Ranger. Uh, this 3 and this 4 are about the Cisco kids, so nearly 16 hours of uh, running actual running time on this, and it is playable in all regions, color and black and white. I think it's been colorized more or less, kind of based on where the cover looks. You can kind of tell it has that kind of like dull 
kind of like kind of like uh, pale looking uh, colorization. I don't think it's full on color. Uh, it does have an interactive menu. Uh, thrilling collection features the most popular westerns of all time: The Lone Ranger, The Cisco Kid, and special bonus Twenty Six Men as well on this. And this says this is from Allegro. But there, as you can see on the spine, it has this four disc right there. Four, a four DVD set. And it's really heavy, just like I think the last one was about Lone Ranger. And then I got Where Was God? Stories of Hope After the Storm. This was a Dove uh, Faith Friendly Approved. Emotion, emotionally Intense. The emotional intensity along with the skillful production makes this documentary a must-see. This is the American Family Association. Um, 89 minutes on this one. Well, it has a, a, a decent amount of special features um, from Elevate Faith as well. A lot of faith-based movies in this wave this time around, I think. At least I think there was. It's a documentary. Uh, from 2015, 5.1 uh, Dolby uh, Digital, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and a 178 by 178 by one uh, aspect ratio on this one. So looks pretty interesting as well. And then I was going to get this from Larry and Melissa, and it's a good thing I didn't because I do have it. Again, again, if I didn't have it already, Calico Cooper, Tate S. McCullough, and Jim Van, Van Dam, 30-proof coil. Every uh, beast wants a, wants a biscuit. So I didn't even know this was actually a horror film because it was hard to see the cover. Uh, it's wide, widescreen presented. Um Yeah, I can hardly see who it's from. Uh, yeah, it's hard to see, but basically, a young woman is kidnapped uh, by a mysterious stranger and chained to a, in an eerie, dilapidated barn. Unwilling to play the victim, she plots a daring escape with thirst and hunger bearing down. Her grip on reality loosens. Can she free herself from the chain and the haunting visions? 30 proof coil uh, punches the audience right in the nose. So this, I'm not sure if it's really like about a monster or if it's saying that the guy that's got her chained up is a monster, you know, like a metaphor for an actual monster. Because that's what it sounds like it could be, too. Uh, clock's in at 82 minutes, 16 by 9, and uh, it's from, I think it says 2010, but what they did is they went and wrote the year on this rickety dilapidated barn. I really don't think it's all that dilapidated. You should see some in our area if you think that's bad. But, uh, it's really, uh, looks pretty cool, 30-proof coil. And then I picked up Zombie Planet puts a horrifying spin on America's obsession with, uh, counting carbs as zero, zero halo. Uh, the Zombie Planet trilogy, over five hours of zombie madness, it has Zombie Planet 1, Zombie Planet 2, Adam's Revenge, and Zombie Planet 3, The Kane Chronicles. 16 by 9 widescreen. Uh, some of the makeup on this looks really bad. I'm not going to lie, <clears throat> but it might be alright. It's from 2011. It's very unique, though. I've never seen anything quite like it. Like, you know, in this wave, like, with it having an entire trilogy... Of zombies and stuff. Uh, maybe a triple feature, maybe, but not like under one, you know, not so much under the same, basically, you know, a trilogy of its own. But, uh, the dead shall inherit the earth. Where have we heard that kind of stuff before? <laughs> uh, there's a guy in the back that kind of looks like Jacob from Twilight when he had the long hair as well. Um, yeah, they're from ZP International, it's saying. Uh, and they're all directed by George uh, Bonilla. So at least you have that where the director did all three. So he 
had hands on in all three of them. So you're not going to get a different vibe from each film like you would ordinarily, you know, if you got like kind of like with the movies, uh, the two movie series with uh, uh, Bagul, um, uh, Sinister. Like, Sinister One was totally a, a scary-ass film, whereas the second one was more lighthearted. It was it still had its moments here and there, but you could tell the two, uh, it had two different directors. I like it when they keep the same director, especially if he has a passion for what he's doing, because a lot of times it makes the film that much better. But you get a guy that comes in off the street, doesn't really care about the original source material, and he's just going to make his own sequel. And I, that's that's how a lot of the uh, the sagas, like in horror, go away. Because they get too far off the beaten path. And then they get ridiculous. And interest is lost. And that's why it's hard to make a good... Uh, like, the audiences today, you know, they've been there, done that. And they kind of like, you know, they stop watching after a while. Whereas back when I grew up... Uh, like the Jason series, like you looked forward to one every year, uh, no matter who directed it, because it was just like he just got like, like the ideas just got like I felt like better because it kept the character fresh. They put him in a different scenery and they, you know, they they did things to keep him vibrant. But uh, you you really can't pull off much of it outside of Saw and maybe a few other more modern. Uh, sagas and horror that really isn't, isn't really a, a much of a uh, uh, kind of like a uh, I don't know what you want to call it but like a saga that continues on for horror especially because usually by the second and third part all the fans of the original kind of die out and are ready for something new like sequels aren't as big as they used to be back in the 80s and then I got uh, your screams won't be heard. Uh, encounter a Susan Susanna O'Brien film. So this was uh, we had a female director, which is perfectly fine. Uh, I have no problem. I know some there's some people out there that do. I don't know why, but I mean some of the best directors in horror have been females, especially like Slumber Party Massacre. Uh, I don't know, oh, Mary Lambert, I think it's her name, Mary Lambert, from, from the first uh, um, Pet Cemetery. Rachel Talalay, she did uh, Freddy's Dead, I really like that movie. Uh, I think she went on to do some other stuff, too. Uh, it's rated R on this one, 2016. A few uh, bonus features on this on this as well. Uh, one, one, <laughs> it's weird, uh, There'll be 5.1, a 1 by 185 uh, aspect ratio widescreen. And it says it's a region 1 encoding. So so I did get this, Larry and Melissa, if you watch this video. So I don't need this now. I don't know if you, you know, get around to watching them because you're so busy, you know, going to the stores. But I did get that. And then I picked up a, I think I got it upside down. And I do. Okay. A two two disc edition of uh, special collectors edition of um, uh, what is it exactly rivers and tides working with time and Andy Goldsworthy uh, produced a film here. I don't know if I guess it's a doc uh, documentary. It says this a uh, film with sub edition seven additional short films plus a new bonus disc with an exclusive filmmaker interview. Uh, Snowballs in Summer and a companion book featuring never before seen foot photos of Andy Goldsworthy creating his artwork during the making of the film. So I don't know if it's sounding like there's a book in here or I have no idea how you'd even get into this thing. Okay, I guess it's right here. It's a really unique, it's really fancy. Kind of almost looks like on the side like a heart, you know, like when you pop open a, a disk drive. Kind of has that disk drive look to it a little bit and feel. Um, two hours, 35 minutes on this one. And it's a two disc set. And it does come with a companion book as well. It encloses a fully illustrated guide featuring uh, Andy Goldsworthy uh, and so on about this film. 
uh, Ebert and Roper gave it two thumbs up. New York Times says it's ravishingly beautiful. Um, I should you think. I believe it's saying it's from 2004, so it's kind of old, kind of you know, kind of getting there. It's in that 20 around 20 year you know time frame. It's kind of weird how some of the older stuff's kind of showing up from time to time in these waves as well. And then I, I got, I think this is, uh, this is saying this two of the best of lowriders. So I don't know if this is actually part two as opposed to the one that as, uh, I showed before. That one was disc one, I guess. The best of lowrider. Uh, uh, wow, well, can't read that. Oh, okay. How low can you go? I, I know, it's written really weird. How low can you go? I'm not going to show the back because this is kind of a little bit risque. I don't want, you know, YouTube to flag it for being, you know, sexist or whatever. or what, You know, whatever. But it's uh, special features, interactive menus, scene selections, digital stereo, and digital video. And then it goes on to say an ultimate bikini video show. So... I, don't, I I get it that you want a car to be flashy and stuff, but honestly, I don't think we need, you know, the girls to be scantily clad to get cars over. I mean, it's been done since I can remember, but uh, it's kind of it's kind of going, you know, the time's kind of going away with it now. I'm not knocking any girls that model or whatever a car. Or I'm not knocking that. It's just, I don't, we're kind of growing up in that era where, you know, Things are getting perceived as sexist, and I get that too. But it's uh, 150 minutes on this. I just don't want to show the pack because <laughs> it is. I mean, the girl here is a little has a short skirt, but I'd say it's worse on the back. So, and that's uh, the best of lowrider. Get down and dirty with the world's clean, cleanest machines. And then finally, we have blue right here. Um, I got Yu-Gi-Oh, Bonds Beyond Time, and a Blu-ray plus DVD combo, Stallone and Rocky. I, I'm pretty much not even going to bother reading these because we all know who Rocky is. And uh, basically, it's a Blu-ray DVD combo. That's what it, yeah. And this one is, I think, is a standalone. Uh from Cynodyne and United Artists Made Rocky, of course, along with uh, San 20th Century Fox, and I believe MGM was responsible for that, too. Uh, basically, Yu-Gi-Oh! For the first time, Yu-Gi, Jaden, and U UC or Yusei are together in an, in an all-new adventure. Um, Rocky clocks in at 120 minutes, rated PG. And Yu-Gi-Oh! here is 50 minutes. Um, does have some extras, of course. And this is you can find this title at CineDimeEntertainment.com as well. Uh, bonus features include a feature flashback, original Japanese movie with English subtitles from 4K Media Inc. And that wraps up the haul. For uh, this, uh, I think I said there's like 26 or 27 uh, video or DVD and Blu-ray in this today. But that wraps up the video for this morning. I'm sorry about a little bit of the things going on in the background. Uh, just kind of happens when you go live. But uh, there's going to be more tree to come. Um, I want to get it back into reviewing a little bit as well. I know those don't get as big a ratings because it's kind of kind of like a more of a oh. A niche you know viewership because you know not everybody wants to hear sit and hear somebody's review about maybe a horror film or maybe the you know the company I'm doing it for it's kind of like you have to be a follower kind of that kind of thing or you know just like like the you know that kind of you know uh, cheaper uh, indie horror films and stuff so but I like to thank everybody that's been watching um, viewership has been been uh, widely up. I don't. I'm gonna chalk it up to a lot because of the Dollar Tree. But that's my haul video for this morning on on this Thursday, and I'll see you again, guys. See you later, everybody. Take care.